Hello. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Welcome to some Iranian Burger Canal. I'll just move Marty. We're experimenting. He's just, he's hidden a little bit, isn't he, again? We're experimenting where, with where he is. He doesn't want to go in his little cove in the corner anymore. What he wants is to be on Rachel's chair, so Rich ain't going to be too pleased when <laughs> she gets home. But we'll see if he stays there. You don't need to see those card stacks yet. We'll move him out of the way if we need to. But there he is. It doesn't appear that much. So we've got an awkward camera angle looking at him. Kind of in a bed. In a chair. You can kind of see him. There we go. Glare it. There you go. That's that's his that's his natural reaction. Hi everyone. How's it going? I'm coming through okay? Brilliant. Right, so this is Iranian Burger Canal. This is Uwe Rosenberg's latest game uh, from Spielworks. It was I can't remember if it was kickstarted. It was crowdfunded sometime last year. And uh, my copy came last month at some point. Uh, so this is I've been saying kind of big meaty game, but it is kind of along the lines of, hey George, it is along the lines of like a glass road, a Nussfjord, a shorter, but still kind of tricky, trickstery kind of game. And another thing linking it to glass road is of course the resource wheel here. It works kind of similarly to glass road actually. So there was one in Aura at Labor as well, which was kind of a, a communal thing, right? Remembering that right? Hasn't been that long since I played it or at Labor, has it? And so in Glass Road, we had kind of basic resources here, and whenever you gained enough basic resources, the wheel would automatically turn and make you uh, glass and advanced things. It's not quite that way in Oranienburg Canal. You have to do a free action. You have to pay to do it, or you do get to do it for free at the end of each round. But it's the same kind of concept. As, as soon as you have got one of all of the basics, you can do the free action to and pay two money to gain one of each of the advanced resources. And the tracker tells you how much you've got of all of the things. The little pictures tell us where we start on each of the bits as well. And so we are building this canal. This is your player board at the start. And this is the standard version of the game where you have got pre-printed tracks to start us off, pre-printed paths. The other side, the variable side, is completely blank but you do still start off with these things. You can just put them wherever you want. So we're going with the basic. The game comes with two different decks of which you won't use a ton of the cards, really. Uh, you only use a few, especially in the solo game. It's a one or two player game. Uh, but there were also two little expansion boxes. That's what these are. That's what these pieces are in uh, that came with two more decks each. So the six in total. And you can play just a, a standard solo game where you're trying to beat a score. The thing in your way is this red marker. It's going to block off one of the actions every turn. And it's going to move from left to right on this row, left to right on this row. Gobble up any money that was there. Stop us taking that action. But you can play it as a campaign as well where you kind of get to see all of the cards in one of the decks across three games. There's a little bit of trickery you need to do to see... to get an extra blue card but you get to see all of the cards and you can kind of add up your score across all of the things but we're just going to do a, a solo game for now but hey there's there's plenty of scope to do a load of this hey ben <laughs> skycroft yes you are responsible for this but that's, that's may, maybe me making mistakes is more responsible but yeah <laughs> another thing that i got wrong because i had it on technically the the wrong language side i missed um that this action once the deck runs out you get a bridge as well, not an option instead. It's these actions once the decks run out, you get. And instead of doing this, you could do this option. But that is uh, additional. Another thing, the important thing we need to remember here that uh, I forgot in my playthrough that I recorded. Hey, you can you can see that on Patreon, but it's a bit wrong. We're going to fix it here. Uh, you need to build the paths next to each other. Like once you've started a, a line of path, which you know, largely, I think apart from roads, like, you need to build adjacent, right? And that's what I forgot. 
last time. We have different sorts of paths. The the path is the cheapest, just the the dirt path. Uh, but places generally don't want to be next to those. Some do. They're the cheapest to build and they can be overbuilt. The other kinds of tracks can't be. But uh, yeah, we'll have a look at the various buildings that we can build and see what they want. Hey, Jacob. Yeah, hopefully. Like, I, I think it's a wider print run anyway than Spielworks normally do. And I, th I think an, an email went out or a post on the BGG forums that in in Europe, there are some leftover games that will be available to buy. But yeah, I think there's a... Oh, you still don't know? Hey, Radisson. I've yet to receive them and still don't know when they will arrive. Oh, no. Sorry about that. Yeah, ours came like... It was de It was delayed, like... I'm like I, I don't really expect... I, I'm just... Uh, they just turn up out of nowhere, don't they? Kickstarters. But yeah, sorry to hear that it's still not arrived. We've got to do rails and canals. Right. So I think we need to get started then. Uh, hey, Bonnie, how's it going? I guess before we get started, if you would like to help to support the channel, there is Patreon and Ko-fi linked in the description. Your support would be massively appreciated. That's how I can make all of the things. And uh, yeah, keep making a good rate of things. We'll see about that. Uh, but let's have a look at stuff. So we have four cards out at the start of the game. See if my buttons work properly. They do. These are from the green stack of the A deck. We've only got a few of these. You see four in the first round, and then every time a new deck is introduced, you know, the, the green deck will run out and then it'll be the orange deck, and there'll be more cards in this display. If you don't build two cards every round in the solo game, the, the two lowest numbers are basically removed. But if I build one of these, only this one will be removed. If I build this one, these both still be removed. There are, no, two will be removed, but they could be removed by me or the game. So the cards themselves, they've got their lovely little names, points that will be worth at the end, and resources that it'll cost me to build them. The middle bit is what they will do when they are activated. So let's say I had just built a carving shop with an action. The way that we activate things in Iranian Burger Canal is by building paths, which we can do from a variety of different actions. But once you have surrounded a card with paths, it does not matter what the paths are. As soon as it is surrounded by four of them, it will activate. It might care about the things that are surrounding it. It might care about things that are anywhere on the board. It might care about things that are in the corner of the board. There are tons of uh, different criteria on these cards. Surrounding it with paths, whatever the paths are, will activate it. Okay, give a little bit of... Uh... <laughs> You get a lovely little bit of stretchy tumbly about Marty in his bed. The other way that buildings activate is with bridges. So bridges go from building to building across paths. You've got to have buildings. You've got to have a path that they are going across. So once you have got two bridges connecting a card, whether it's, whether it's surrounded by paths or not, it will activate. So... Each building can potentially activate twice. There is, we're told in the rulebook, in one of the expansions, or maybe both of the expansions, there is scope to remove bridges, which would let you put bridges there again in the future, and so you'd be able to activate buildings more times. I don't think there's anything of that in the, the base game, though. So that's kind of the main thing. You're putting buildings down, you're surrounding them with paths, but hopefully doing things that they like to score you a load of points. So we've got the carving shop. Let's see, it cost me a wood, some clay. That's all right. It wants to have a load of bridges on it. So when the, whenever this is activated, depending on the number of bridges that are touching it, I will get this much money. If it is surrounded by two or more roads, then I can have two wood. That's all right. So it would be nice to kind of activate that first with bridges and then surround it later when it's already got two bridges on it. The private railroad with 10 points. We want to have rail tracks anywhere. So if we have four rail tracks when this is activated, we will get three points and we will get three money as well. The boat shed wants to be surrounded by a load of canals and we'll get two 
iron anyway, no matter what. But the more canals it's surrounded by, the more wood we'll get. And then the shaft tower, if it's surrounded by three or more paths, then we'll get five ore. If it is surrounded by three or more different paths, we can turn ore into money. Okay. And that might be possible, you know, because initially you can put paths down. Everything else in terms of paths, the roads, rails, canals, once they're down, they're down. That's it. But paths can be overbuilt and changed. So, you know, early on, first activation, just surround it quickly with a load of cheap paths. Later on, upgrade those paths into other things that the building surrounding it want. And then turn that all into big, big bucks. Maybe. So those are the things that we can build. The actions that we can take are on this action board. Wait a minute. That's bigger than it was before. You can't see it all. That's gone massive. Let's shrink it down now. Originally, it probably wasn't meant to be here. So, we have these seven action spots. We have four workers. In the two-player game, the, the first player in a round gets five actions, and then everyone else, oh, the, the other person, gets three actions, and then it alternates. In the solo game, we have got four actions every round, but a different space is going to be blocked off by this marker every time. So another thing that changes over the campaign as well is, and I assume you could just do this based on how you're feeling, you can have the disc move in different ways as well. So in this game, it's going to go left to right, top row, bottom row, and that's our seven rounds of the game done. It can zigzag top to bottom, left to right, or it can start from the right first. So it will make a difference to what you can do. So yeah, Skycroft's saying you can only build one building per round in the first two because these are your only two spaces. This icon here is build a building. It's blocked off here. Next round, this one's going to be blocked off. So whatever we take, if... Yeah, there's, there's not really anything that jumps out at me that, oh, we should get these two together. But if a synergy came out between these two cards, it's a waste of time anyway because one of them is getting discarded at the end of this. Hey, 18xx training, how's it going? Well, oh, I'm stuck on something. I think it's the wire to Marty's camera because it's in an awkward place. Yeah, they are massive discs. So the actions that we can take, they are raising the buildings. They are building paths. So a maximum of three between paths and roads. Maximum of two, any paths that we like. Down here, it's gain resources or alternatively gain a bridge. Bridges cost wood. There's a little player aid for the costs of the paths and where to put them. Uh, any time actions we can have, you can buy any basic things that you like, but it costs you kind of where your marker is going to be going to. So if I wanted to buy a wood at the start of the game, it cost me one money going from zero to one. If I wanted to buy an ore, it cost me two money. If I wanted to buy a clay, it cost me three money and so on and so on. It depends how much you've got already of it. You are limited by your wheel as to how many resources you can have. You can have eight of the basic, six of the advanced. Uh, so yeah, anytime you can buy those resources. And at any time as well, you can pay two money to turn your material wheel. But as I was saying earlier, you've got to have at least one of all of the basics. And then for a free action, you can pay two money, get that turned, and you've turned a little basic resources into some advanced resources instead. Right. Yeah, so I think that's all of the stuff. So what should we do? I kind of like the idea of that um, carving shop getting bridges on it first. It might be quite awkward to do, though. In those first two buildings, it's... Oh, they're, they're numbered numerically, by the way, for the solo game. Just so that the lowest numbered ones are going to get discarded first. The boat shed... I think I did in the original playthrough, actually. The boat shed just wants to be surrounded by canals. Canals are expensive. You need money to build canals. But there is one out on the board. So we could at least get something around it. If we could get another one, then it would be good. But we don't really have to worry about it now. That'll be there for a good while. The private railroad is expensive. And I'm not going to have that many rails out for ages. I think that's kind of out of the equation. The carving shop is cheap, though. I think getting two roads around it, it's not going to be too much, is it? 
And getting two bridges, even if we had one bridge on it, it would be worth two money. If we had no bridges on it, it would be worth our money. Yeah, it makes sense. Like a lot, a lot of the little things as well. Like it's the private railroad that wants to be next to a load of the rails. Yeah, I, I think the carving shop is a good shout. So also, these top three spaces have money on them. They get a money put on them every round. This disc gobbles up that money. These actions down here will get a money put on them at the end of the round if no one has gone there this round. So if I want to get resources, which I probably do, I'll be a bit limited as to what I can do. So let's get a carving shop out. Where would we want to put it? Next to where we're going to put other stuff in the future. So you've got to plan stuff out. Yeah, you kind of want it next to, hey, there's a path there already. Why not put it um, next to that? Have you seen that it doesn't gobble up the money? I mean, maybe it's just like at the beginning then that it, I think it takes it at the start, doesn't it? Because it's like, I've been playing it that it takes it away anyway. as like an extra rush to it. Maybe it was just in the setup that it said take the thing away. That it like just takes those but i don't know if there's been uh, contradictory information i'm not sure right let's build some let's build that carving shop i gain a money so we can do something with it later i've got no money though i've got no wood so maybe first before you jump the gun you want to go get some wood so we can get four wood here three of any basic resource or four clay there I think let's just jump in and get four wood. Eh? One, two, three, four. Then we could go to the carving shop because, yeah, doing the action will gain me the money I need for it as well. So it's going to cost a wood, two clay, got none of that now, and a thaler, a money. And we can build this carving shop. See, if we're going to build the boat shed, I want it next to the boats, but I kind of think just next to a, next to a path where it, it's already got something. That sounds all right for now. We're probably not. Yeah, we're not going to get the private railroad built no matter what now because it's getting discarded. We've built the one. <laughs> it's distracting everyone while you're moving about. So if we want to build paths or anything, the cheapest paths cost a clay each to build. I've got no clay now, so we probably want to hop over and... Maybe it will give us some stock for... Like, early game, you're going to be getting a load of resources. Later on, hopefully, your cards will um, produce you a load of things. Hi, hey, Jacob. I just saw your message. Like, I really like it. Like, I, I think of it in terms of, like, a Nussfjord. Probably more brain-bendy and complicated than uh, Nussfjord, just because of the spatial part of it. Trying to map out how your stuff is going. Well, I do tend to just kind of go with the flow with stuff and just get stuff down. Try not to agonise quite as much when I'm not live, which maybe I should do it the other way around. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, we, we, there's no point looking at them. Let's get some paths down. Because we want paths and other buildings so we can start putting bridges down. So it's something for the future. We'd like roads next to it as well. Roads want bricks though. We do have a brick. So build up to three paths and roads, build maximum of two routes, like of your choice. Well, I can't build more complicated things. Rail costs iron that I've got none of. Wood I've got. And canals cost money. It's three tailors each. But you do get clay back when you build canals. So I think it doesn't make sense to go to that space because you're just building less. We've got a money as a bit of a nest egg for the future. I'm kind of thinking a road with that... Yeah, it's nice to have the brick, but we also want to think about, yeah, we're going to have the ore, that's okay. At the end of the round, you get to turn this wheel for free. So you always want to try and make sure you've got one of everything at the end of a round so that you get the free stuff on that side. So I think we are, whatever it's going to be, there's going to be two paths involved, isn't there? Because I can't afford more than one road because I've only got one brick. I guess Skycroft, build three roads and paths. Oh, and build a road, yeah. Yeah, because we'll get the brick back eventually, essentially, won't we? Because we're turning the wheel at the end. 
So we want the we want the road on one of the open sides basically, don't we? So we can so another building can benefit from the nice thing that we built. So we'll have a path up top. Because we do want it to be nice and surrounded, but the the more expensive things, it's nicer if you can have a few things benefiting from it. Benefiting from it as well. But we don't want to, yeah, you, you gotta think about your your paths as well if you're building adjacent, haven't you? So what did what wanted roads? Oh, it was this. That's why I'm putting a road next to it. Hey, clever. We could like leave it open. Because I, I don't want to surround it right now, do I? That would be daft. We want roads to be next to it. Yeah, I don't really know where I'm going to put other stuff just yet. I don't want to cut off the canals and things. Because if I build the boat shed next time... The shaft tower wants to be next to three dirt paths as well, doesn't it? That'd be all right. We could put the path kind of over here. And that's already two paths for the shaft tower next time. We'll have an iron. We'll have a wood. I think that's... Maybe that's next round's build. I don't know what I'll do with all that ore. And then upgrade, upgrade that to a road at some point. That could be that one's second road. How long are you going to leave it not activating it, though? We'll see. <laughs> they, know, they know what they're talking about better than me. Let's build the shaft. I, th I think we're saying the same things, though. Surround the space. Oh, you think, like, put all of the paths around it so we could just put the shaft tower straight down? I think, I think I'm probably going to build more paths there next round anyway. Right, end of the round stuff. Refill the structures. So something gets discarded, because there's got to be two leaving this display every round. We fill it back up, and then when the green deck depletes, which it now has, an orange card goes into the display. So there's always going to be five cards in the display now. We'll have a look at them in a minute. Uh, turn the material wheel for free. It's optional, but I'm going to do it. Saves me two money, basically, and we've got some nice things now. It only costs one. If you desperately needed that ore, it only costs one to get it back. Then money. So money on all the top spaces. I'm just going to move that red a bit early and gobble the money up. And money on all the empty bottom spaces, which is just that middle one. Hand over the starting disc, not in a solo game. So go. Yeah. I don't want to cut off the canals and uh, rails. Yeah, the green board is your personal board. The This is the action board that everyone shares. But uh, yeah, you've each got one of these. So this is the basic version. You've got these pre-printed on here. You can play an advanced version. On the other side, it's this exact same thing, but it's got nothing pre-printed on it. You start with, I think, the exact same things, but you can put them anywhere you like. So that's like the an extra advanced mode. I didn't pay, I didn't pay clay. Oh, thanks. Oh, what did I do? I did two uh, roads, didn't I? Paid me brick, didn't pay me clay. Right. So let's have a look at these new buildings then. So, we were thinking about the shaft tower. Who isn't? There is a junk goods shop. Wants to be next to as many different things as possible. Will get me three money and an amount of iron based on how many different things it's next to. The mine. It's worth a lot of points. Okay, what's this? Is this... So, if it's next to one or more rails... And next to a... Or next to a rail on the edge, is that? Luckily, if you've ever got questions about any of the things each of the decks has got a little glossary like the symbols tend to like as you see them come up more and more like the i think we've lost the plus yeah that was on the railroad wasn't it the big plus with arrows is anywhere on the board the mine depends on the position of the rail tracks if there is at least one adjacent to the structure gain four or and two thalers if there at least one of this is on the edge of the board yes it is edge of the board 
so it wants to be next to a rail track that is on the edge of the board, you would get four ore, two money, and two points. And it's worth seven itself. And the first orange card that we see, the Foundry Harbour. Eight points if it's next to one canal when it's activated. This arrow here means for every canal. So for every canal that it's next to, you get an iron. Or you could choose for every canal you've got anywhere, not necessarily adjacent to it, an ore. So ways of getting... I think the shaft tower looks more and more promising because of other ways of getting that ore later as well. And it would get us five now. So I think it's definitely something to stick to. So another thing that has come out on the action board, now the green deck has depleted. When you take this action to raise a building that we did last time, from now on, when a big red marker isn't blocking it, you'll also be able to build a bridge. They cost a wood. It's how we get to activate things more. So a, a building this time is build a building and also do a path or a road. So we've got clay again. The shaft tower we can afford. So that's the iron and the wood spoken for, isn't it? Oh, I see. If I'd put three around it, we could have just finished it off with that one. Or we'll finish it off with something else. It's worth building more paths anyway. I can only build one thing, but it means we're going to lose the boat shed. But I don't think that's too terrible. The fourth... Oh yeah, I never went there, did I? Yeah, they build up. Yeah, let's stick with the shaft tower. So that's another money for me. So that's tempting to build two different paths, isn't it? I'm not going to have the iron, though. I don't think I'm going to have six money to do two canals. It would be nice, though. But if you were doing that, you'd want, like, the boat shed or the foundry harbour or something. I like the look of the shaft tower. A pair of wood and an iron. And we've started building a little path nook for it so build a path or a road we'll go for a path we've got one more clay left so that's nearly surrounded and ready to activate now and so the boat shed is going to get discarded at the end so i mean you could complete it by continuing the i know i haven't got iron at the moment but you could complete it by continuing your rails so it's not cut off but it can always go down and around here can't it right we've got none of anything we don't have to worry about all because activating that building is going to give us a load of that clay and wood we've got to think about clay more than anything because we need paths so four clay here and we just get nothing three clay and we get a money I suppose, like, you could... I don't think I could afford to do enough paths with this. Like, hypothetically, if you went there and there and had enough to do stuff with, you would have six money to go there and get two canals. Just because you can do it, though, is that going to help? It's, it's, it's going to be good for the Foundry Harbour at some point. But I don't know, it's necessarily... A massively strong thing to do if that's what your plan was you should maybe have gone for the boat shed as well that's disappearing though we can't think about boat sheds all the time the mine's quite nice as well quite a cheap thing and not a very difficult thing to do as soon as we can kind of produce some iron which admittedly i haven't done with anything that i've built like both of the things would activate if i put if i use my brick on a path That would activate. I would get. I would only get one money because it's not got any bridges on it. But it would have two roads, and I would get two wood back. That's a way of boosting that. So out of the three, yeah, we need to get some clay. We could just let that build up. So I think if you were building two fancy things, maybe we could do. We're not going to have an iron to do a rail. I don't know why I'm thinking about having a rail. We can do that next time with the mines. Yeah, it might be good to have the money on hand. We'll get the more clay, because money will keep building up on there as well, won't it? If I don't choose to go there. So we'll get four clay again. Should I activate both of the buildings? We'll get some ore. Well, 
yeah, it's something, isn't it? It would be nice to have bridges on it, but I don't think it's worth holding everything up until we've got those bridges. We can activate it a second time by having two bridges on it, and then we would get three money. It's so like, in theory, it's nice activating it for the first time with bridges. It's just that action isn't, like, off yet. So we want some kind of paths. I do want to kind of just build a canal thing. You could do the middle bottom action first. Oh, I'll well, get some resources. I think out of these three paths, what are we going to build next? Building a mine would be nice, but the junk goods shop wants a load of different things next to it. If I was to build a canal, at some point there, and a path there, that would already have three different things next to it. That's something to maybe think about next round. Oh, to do the bridge out of it. I get you. Right, and then just build the three standard paths to get that activated. Yeah, and then next round, we could build something here with this, and that can be the second bridge. Ah, uh, so we'd like a path, wouldn't we? I see now why he said don't put uh, the path up there. Because it would be nice to activate it for the first time with two bridges on it. So it would be worth three money. But it'd still be worth two, wouldn't it, with one bridge? Yeah, I think that's a good shout. And we're earning money here for canals later. And a load of stuff, you can get resources and stuff with it. So we'll do a bridge with that. I've got a wood. Bridges cost a wood. So the only place that we can put a bridge at the moment, got to do it across a path and connect in some buildings. Otherwise, what would be the point of a bridge? So that's not activated anything yet. It's two bridges that activate a building. And then finally, we'll do some paths up to three. And again, paths or roads, because this will build up more money as well for next time. So there's no point in rushing to it. We won't be able to do this next time either. So again, I've got some clay. I've got a brick. I think finishing off is okay because it will get us the two wood. It'll get us two money. Three would be nice, but it'll get us three when we fully activate it. So it's a brick for a road and zooming in on the card again. It's now being completed. It's surrounded by paths. So we look at it. How many bridges are on it? There are one. There is one. And uh, that gets us two money then. So I've got six now. Are there two or more paths around it? Yes. So get two wood. So we tick up on that. And that's all lovely. That's just the first thing built. Second thing, we'll pay a clay. And we'll do a path there. Because the, the two criteria contradict each other. You're only ever going to be able to do one of them. So this is now completed. How many paths the dirt roads are next to it? Well, four. If there are at least three, you get five ore. So that should sort us out for that for a while. And then next time we activate it with bridges, we want to have four ore on hand to turn it into eight money. Money is points as well, if you can keep hold of it for the end. Still got a path to build. It's going to be a path as well because we've only got clay. We could pay the two money to turn the wheel, but there's nothing that... I suppose if we did that, we could build a rail and then we could think about the mine or something next time. No, we can't, you can't do rails with this action though. Shut up about rails. The only thing you could do is roads. You can do roads or paths. Thinking, if a path came down here and I wanted to do like the junk goods shop maybe, to have a load of different things next to it, there's a good place to have a canal and maybe the foundry harbour would want to go here. Like if you've hypothetically got a second canal there, you're already halfway to it having loads and getting a load of iron from there. This would already have 
road path canal. It's probably not going to have a train track next to it because that's miles away. But that's already three different things. So this would get you a single iron. <laughs> that doesn't really count for a great deal. Or we could just get it... Like, the mine would still activate for its four ore, which might just be wasted. Two money is nice. Some points is nice. The junk goods shop is just easier to do, isn't it? And it can be repeated. Again, it would already have all the different stuff next to it, wouldn't it? I kind of like the sound of that. Let's put it right down the middle. Getting right in the way of everything. You can upgrade it later. We can turn it into something else. Yeah, so that's the third thing. So we did road path road. Those two things have already activated and that's all of my action discs gone. So we need to refresh the display. So I only built one thing. We need to discard something from it and then it gets filled back up to five cards. I'll have a look at those in a minute. Oh, it's looking a bit canally. Floodgate and a publishing house. Then our money's going on there. Let's move you ahead of time. We definitely want to build the specialty paths because that's got three money on it and that money will get gobbled up in the fourth round. Have I done all the bits? Oh, the free wheel spin. Yes, we have one of each resource so we can have one free wheel spin. So I'll take that. That's fine by me. And we've got six money going into this round. So let's have a look then at the new cards. So we've still got that Foundry Harbour. Wants canals. The Floodgate. Wants canals. Oh, the, the Foundry Harbour as well could give you a ton of ore for canals anywhere. It does want at least one canal next to it. And it will give you iron for canals next to it. But canals anywhere would be nice as well. The Floodgate. So the more... Oh, it will get you three money no matter what. But if it's next to three canals... It'll get you four points on top of the five it's already worth. And then the publishing house will get... If, you, if you've got a road next to it when you activate it, for every min... Oh, for every... Is that for every path you've got the least of? Let me check in me. Compare your wood, clay, and ore supplies. If there is at least one road adjacent to this structure, gain a number of thalers matching the lowest amount of materials. Okay. So we want to have a load of all of the materials. So yeah, we are looking quite well off. <laughs> Does, is that not just a regular catchphrase for everyone else? It's looking a bit canally. I say it all the time. So yeah, this is the first time where we can do two buildings. We can also do two fancy paths, which could be canals. The costs for those buildings, the Foundry Harbour would cost two bricks. So we'd have to do at least... I mean, it's not going to disappear. They don't have to both be built this round. We could do a, a cheaper one. The Floodgate, three wood... One clay, one money, a lot more possible. And we could get two canals put next to it, which is the maximum benefit for it. I think that's a highlight. Get a couple of canals built. The downside is the only other path we can build is here. We do want a building to go there, don't we? We're getting a free bridge when we take this build in action now. So at that point, there is potential to put a bridge here, which would activate this building again, fully bridged up, and it would be worth three money and another couple of wood. Again, it's not something that has to happen this round, but it could, and it could fund like the other resources and things that we need. So the Foundry Harbour, the benefit of that would be, if that was the one here surrounded by a load of canals, that would be loads of iron, which would help you build rails later and that would be good for the mine which is very cheap to get out it's just that well, i suppose we're on four ore now so gaining four more ore wouldn't be too terrible get a rail on the edge of the board it's worth a fair bit of stuff it's worth seven points in itself as well which is quite nice the junk goods shop I mean, it's still looking all right. It was never looking that good, was it? So 
thinking at the most, you can only get three paths out this round. Hi, Rach. Morty's been waiting for you. So I can't even use my desk. You can move him. It's not fair on everyone. There you go. He's, he'll, he'll come down with you anyway now. I think he's being fed. Say hi to the good people, Rach. Hello, good people. Well, she's suspicious now. He'll probably follow you downstairs. Right. The publishing house might be good later as well if we build up a load of resources. Right, we're rich. We probably want canals building. Let's have a look. Yeah, the floodgate is good for points, isn't it? So it doesn't necessarily need to be next to a ton of things. And it's a lot more buildable. We need wood. So probably going to get a bit of wood and get some... Yeah, and get the bridge on that. It's not going to activate either with a bridge on it, is it? Do the canals like... This way. So let's do a building. Can I forward it right now? No, we need some wood. Let's get some wood. It's probably going to be the only resources that I want to just get there. We're probably going to have to spend the money and get a clay or something. So yeah, let's get some wood. Let's build a floodgate. And additionally a bridge. So the floodgate is three wood, one clay. That's all the clay and a money. But the action got us a money. Pop that floodgate there. This could be a canal as well later. And the bridge, or the bridge costs a wood as well, doesn't it? But that can go there and activate again the carving shop. It's now got two bridges next to it. So that's three money. Rich. And there are still two roads next to it. So it's worth two stuff as well. Two wood. I thought that the... Do you mean the, the bridge as well? I thought it was ore, but it says um, I was using the wrong side. So I just assumed that they were all the same, but it's uh, in addition. So you get the bridge as well. I had been playing it like um, either or though, because the other ones are. The other ones are all alternatively. And it's because the other side of the board still says alternatively, but in addition is in German. So I just thought, oh, that's alternatively still, but in German, but it's not. I was just using the wrong side of the board. Right. Good things are happening. We want to build canals. And we want to do another building. So yeah, we could just put the two canals around it. It's activated and sorted, isn't it? And that could be a third canal in the future. Let's get it done. So canals cost... Oh, canals are going to give us all the clay we need as well, aren't they? Quite beautifully. So we can build two routes of any kind. Canals cost three money. There was three money just sitting on that space. One, two, three. So that's six for me two canal bits. We'll have one there. So we've got to build adjacently for the canals and the train tracks. That's a couple of canals right there. Each canal gets you two clay. One, two, three, four. Oh, suddenly the publishing house is looking all right, isn't it? I'm sure those resources will disappear fairly quickly. And that means the floodgate, the floodgate, I was saying it right, instantly activates. It's next to two canals, so it's going to get us three more money. So we're on 10 cash, even after just spending six. And three points, which is pretty good, isn't it? Stick the points at the bottom. There's uh, victory point tokens for when you get them across the game and then a lovely scoring pad with a billion pages in it for afterwards right that's good last action it's going to be a building isn't it a building and a path which we can afford loads 
We can spend, yeah, we can spend some money to rotate the wheel as well. Oh, so we could afford like the Foundry Harbour or the Publishing House. Because, yeah. The Junk Goods Shop and the Mine. I think good with other things, but the Foundry Harbour, the. Like, yeah, it's. The, the thing's already kind of been set, hasn't it? To be a good thing. And surely we could get more canals around it later. Look at the money. Oh, that action's blocked off, though, annoyingly. The publishing house. I mean, I don't see a way kind of instantly. It would still be worth like three money getting it out. And maybe later on, if we've got tons of resources, it could be worth even more. I think the Foundry Harbour, though, we've got a little canal bit for it, haven't we? And there's another money right there. So we should pay as a free action to get the bricks. Two money as a free action turns your wheel. And so it's going to cost a wood, a clay, and two bricks. And there is a foundry harbour. Wants to be next to at least one canal. But if, if we could surround it, I mean, that's, that's four iron. And then you could maybe think about train tracks and things. Because nothing's getting discarded this round. Because we have built two things. So the mine is still there. Still begging to be built. So Marcy knows now. There is, like, he definitely knows that... Rachel isn't the biggest fan of him being on her chair because, uh, as you might imagine, she can't use her chair. But he loves being on the old chair. Oh yeah, the path, stroke road. So I've spent the brick now. We could afford to turn it again. Is a road massively necessary? Now. I suppose it's always good to have something being built, isn't it? I suppose the publishing house wants to be next to at least a road, but there's a road there. We could just get a path down so it would activate. I think maybe just a path for now. Maybe stick it up there so whatever we do end up putting up there is kind of on the way to being activated. Yeah, kind of the lazy way of doing it because I don't really know what we're getting. I need to budget a new chair for H. Well, he did used to have a chair. We had a fold-up chair in here that he was always on. But to make it nicer in here and to have a load of space, he's got a lovely bed kind of in the corner there. His favourite blanket. But of course, he's bored of that now. He wants to go back on chairs. So end of the round. Oh yeah, refresh the display. So a couple more cards in this. We have now exhausted the orange deck. So now when you come to build three paths and or roads, like some combination of three things, you could now have a bridge and a path and a road instead. The blue deck comes out now, so we've got six cards permanently in the display. <laughs> I'm pretty hungry now. I haven't been thinking about burgers some, somehow until now. I haven't been thinking about burgers in relation to this game. But yeah, it's probably playing it around this time, isn't it? That does it. Right. Yeah, and they're blocking the canal space, which is annoying. But we'll just... We'll activate the Foundry Harbour next round when it's cleared off. I have to think about, do you want to get wood this round? Because you're not going to be able to get it next... Well, we'll be able to get three. It's not... Um, massively in the way right does this angle show us the things it does new stuff we've got the loading depot for every canal it's next to get two clay for every is this all or is it just separate into just make it a bit clearer for every railway anywhere get a money well it doesn't matter too much because i haven't built no railways but the loading depot you may use the effects of this structure in it yeah you get both of the things and you can do them in any order the fishing boat for every canal. For every canal. Oh, it needs to have at least one canal next to it. And then for every canal anywhere on the edge of the board, get two points. Ooh, that's going to be. 
not that great. I haven't put a single canal on the edge of the board. Maybe that's something I'll want to do. Thank you. Thaler's on the big actions. Thanks, Rach. You shifted him. No. I think if you if you shake a treat, he'll he'll be off there. You can. We'll have to get his folding chair back in here if he's if he's in a chair kind of a mood. Have you got treats already prepared? No. Oh. The wrapper? Oh, it's just a wrapper. Rach hasn't played it yet. I think she might like it though. It's the feed in generally, isn't it, Rach, that you're not a fan of in the Rosenbergs. Mm -hmm. And there's no feeding in this, except feeding a big wheel. Oh, yeah, and the coach hall is the last bit. What, the glass road wheel? Yeah, it is basically, it's kind of the glass road wheel. It doesn't turn for free, but it's similar. Like you've got basic resources and advanced resources. So when it turns, you're making the special things. So you've got a grid that you're putting buildings out on. They activate when they're surrounded by paths. A lot of them want to be next to certain paths and they activate again when they've got two bridges on them. So you've got to kind of plan a little network around it. You like Glass Road, don't you? Yeah, it's not It's not a, it's not a lot like Glass Road, uh, apart from wheelie kind of stuff. Yeah, for, for vacating the chair, you can have a little treat. He's got his favourite kind of I don't know what they are. They they look like foamy kind of fish cubes. Where's his camera? There we go. Oh. There we go. So he'll be all right. He's been here for a while. Okay, then. So the coach hall. So you need to have one road next to it and five, seven, or ten roads anywhere. And for that, you will get three clay and some points. What's the plus in the middle of the criteria for? If there is one road adjacent to this structure and five additional rows, does it mean that this road that's next to it doesn't count as one of those, maybe? Yeah, we haven't done a ton of roads. We're probably not getting that built, to be honest. That's a very good glass road. We should do it again at some point. It might end up in the April vote. We should. We are doing some revisiting next week with some Vita Lacerda games, but I feel like I haven't played Glass Road for a long, long time. I think we did it live at some point, so it's probably not been that long ago. Right then. So... Yeah, it's still looking quite canally. We've yeah, we finally got a way of getting iron, but the only way to build rails is this blocked off action, which we can't do. And the mine would love a little rail. We could just build it and get it up there. I, f I think we probably want that for wood because bridges, basically. I mean, we could get the floodgate just activated again, couldn't we? And get the money and points again. Yeah, it's a shame because the mine would give us the ore. And... Mind you, you need a load of path in done before we have three different paths next to this chef tower so we could spend it for more money. And I've got a lot of money right now. The junk goods shop is still hanging out as well. So yeah, we've got more things that want to be next to canals that we can't quite build yet, but they could, you know, it's it's not ideal, but as a kind of way of preparing, they could be down here and next to one canal each already. It's just that the fishing boat wants a load of canals on the edge of the board, and I haven't done a single one yet. The loading depot doesn't really care about that. It just wants to be next, next to a load of canals and have rails anywhere. So that's probably a... A thing to go for. We probably want a couple of actions this time going for wood and clay, right? Because I don't see it kind of coming from anywhere else. 
that's already been activated the full amount of times in terms of wood. So yeah, I think let's leave that building up, two, three, four, because that's not going to be blocked off next time. This is. Clay, get a money as well. One, two, three, four. And you could turn the wheel now. If building canals around the fishing boats, the boat shed is long gone, unfortunately. The game got rid of the boat shed. But yeah, we don't need a load of basic paths necessarily building at the moment. So I think I think two buildings is the thing to go for. The iron will help with the fishing boat, but again, yeah, I haven't really done stuff on the edge, have I? What about the loading depot? That's a wood, three clay and a brick. We can afford it. A wood, three clay, and a brick. And I can also put a bridge down, though. So I could just have it here and activate the floodgate again, just earn some more money. And then one of these things is ready to activate in the future. Yeah. I'm kind of put off the fishing boat a little bit, though. We've got a lot of boat things, though. We've got a floodgate, a foundry harbour, and now a loading depot. Yeah. We'll do the bridge next and put it... Like, we don't want the shaft tower activating again, though. No, I think that's a good idea. Get the bridge one. Wood for a bridge. We'll put it there and activate the floodgate again. It's got two canals next to it still, so that is three money, three points. A lot of money sitting there. We've got six points now. And then we've still got some resources. The mine, it's still something, isn't it? All we'd need is kind of one rail on the edge there. It just feels like this action only gets us two things at a time and we probably just want canals, right? This specifically wants them to be on the edge of things. I shouldn't focus into bad idea because you could build two canals a turn for the next three turns. Yeah, we just have to focus on it. We've kind of got the money for it, haven't we? Way more money than I usually have. Yes, can I afford it? Yeah, we've got all the stuff we need for it already. So there's another money coming in. It costs two wood, one iron, two dollars. And I think, yeah, get it in our kind of canal section. So. Oh, we've got a path. Oof, I don't know. Are we going to build the mine? At some point, I've some, somehow fixated on it. No, because that'll get in the way. Doing a rail will get in the way. Oh, it, the rail doesn't have to be on the edge, though. The rail being on the edge gets you two points. The rail just being next to it still gets you the four or and two money. Kind of work for this, maybe? I mean, we could upgrade this to a road, couldn't we, as the thing that we're doing? I haven't got clay, so it would cost a lot of money and kind of free actions to do that. You could do that in the future. Or you could just keep surrounding this with paths so that whenever something gets put into it, it just activates. Get a path up there. And that's your clay. So I think, free action time, we want to spend a money each getting these from zero to one so the wheel can turn for free, which would cost two anyway. And then we're probably going to have to worry... We're not going to have to worry about wood. We can always come here. Because clay will still be available. End of the round anyway. So nothing's discarded. We still built two things, hanging on to those green buildings. Couple of new things out. Only the middle action gets a money on the bottom. But all of these on the top get one. Uh, free wheel spin. Let's do it. And is that all the bits? I think so. Let's have a look at the new stuff then. So we've got pottery, 
just worth four points. It wants to be next to two roads and have this much wood. If you meet the criteria, you can then spend an amount of clay. Oh, so the more wood you've got, the less clay it will cost to get five money and five points. Kind of nice. The metal processing, I think we had this last time, for every building in the corner of your board, you can spend a, an iron to get three points. We've got a bit of iron doing nothing. That's why I built it in the game that I filmed. Right, we definitely want canals. I suppose the advantage of surrounding them by the loading depot is that that would give us clay and sort out a basic kind of need there. But I could just surround the foundry harbour. But we've got loads of iron now. You don't want to necessarily do that right now. Yeah, the metal processing is a good thing to have out. We're a bit short on bricks at the moment. A bit short on a lot of things. We've got one brick. It's just that we haven't got the basics to... Is it going to be another couple of actions getting basics? So yeah, the loading depot is good at getting us clay. Maybe just putting the two next to that, completing it with a path and getting six clay is still like a nice amount of stuff. Because the excess iron, the getting the iron from the foundry harbour will be good. Or we don't have to even get the iron. We could get ore. That shaft tower's ne never getting done, is it? Right. So yeah, we've got no way of gaining wood, really. And the middle action has got two money on it that is going to be nicked. So let's get wood that way. I'm kind of thinking the two canals around here and just get yeah after building the canals we'll have a lot of clay as well I'm thinking this doesn't necessarily want to be next to any more canals either probably didn't need to go there it probably could have just gone there maybe Because something else canal based might go there. But that is something in the corner as well for metal processing, isn't it? We didn't know that was coming out. But yeah, no take back, sis. Yeah, I'm thinking a couple of canals. So that's cost six again. That's going to give me a load of clay, though, isn't it? No matter where I put the canals, we don't need to. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, we don't. I don't need to worry, do I? It gets me two each, doesn't it? One, two, three, four. Now let's decide where they're going. They don't need to complete anything just yet. There's a big load of clay. And you know, if we built if we built the pottery, we wouldn't have the wood. Forget that idea. Yeah, I want the loading depot to have loads. And we could use it for other stuff later. We want stuff getting built in the corners, don't we? What do we need for that? Bricks. on want ore and stuff. I think surround the foundry harbour. Oh yeah, we can choose to get ore, can't we? That's canals anywhere. That's the thing we're missing. Yes, very good idea. I'm just focusing on the iron aspect. And it's only a bridge away from activating again. And we could have the iron there later. So the fishing harbour. I've had my clay already. The fishing harbour, the foundry harbour activating again. It's got a canal next to it, so that's fine. And we can choose the option for any canal anywhere, for every canal anywhere, get an ore. So one, two, three, four, five ore. That's pretty nice, isn't it? So suddenly five ore. Suddenly a load of potential for that stuff, like saying oh, we're a bit short of this for metal processing. Well, now we're not. And we could have that bridge right now if we wanted to. I don't know if we want to put that bridge down right away. And what would it get us? It would get us four iron, which we can't store. So no, you don't want to you don't want to do that just yet. So yeah, in terms of spending iron, the only thing that wants iron out there is the coach hall, which wants a load of roads to be out, which is not happening. So I think 
A good score in this game, Michael, is... Hi, Michael. Uh, at least 80 to be considered a win. 150 is considered unbelievable. Right, yeah. Do we, do we just want to build... I suppose like this will just keep building up, won't it? Whatever we don't do. I would like to build two things. Metal processing wants building sooner or later, so I think I'm going to turn the wheel. So that we've got two bricks. Wood, three money. Oh dear, where's that money gone? Get that in there. That's nearly activated. Yeah, surely we'll get 200. I mean, the shaft tower can get you money, but... Uh, it's it's kind of... It's it's less... Your your previous round's actions aren't blocking you off. This thing's blocking you off. So the you can play this two players, and you alternate between having five actions around... The other person has three actions, and it just flips round to round. In the solo game, this big red disc blocks a space off, and it can move in different ways. The standard way is left to right, top row, bottom row, and it can zigzag or do right to left. So it blocks the kind of things that you can do, and you... What was I going to say? Oh, you get four actions every round instead of alternating it. We can still, I can build the the bridge bit of it. Where do I want a bridge to go? I think something in the top left. Maybe, maybe the mine. It just all doesn't help right now, but it doesn't have to be activated right now. Oh, I see what you mean, because like then we could use the bridge to activate the metal, the foundry harbour, and get the metal back that I'm about to spend. I get you. Let's just do that then. I'm just going to do them back to back anyway. So the other building, should we just do a mine? The, the junk goods shop, there is two things next to it. It's three money and it's an iron. The mine, though, is... that's two money and four ore. I think that's all right. And it only costs a wood and a money. It'll kind of pay for itself. And it's very easy to complete. So yeah, we can clay and get a path. Is this my money or is this... Um... Or is that already spent? Yeah, and then this way around, we can activate. So I'm going to have to spend a money to get a wood. And then I've already spent all of the stuff. No, I've already spent all of the stuff, haven't I, that I need for this? We want a wood, though, for the free turn, no matter what. So it would be nice to have four things in corners, but that's still spending three of the iron, isn't it? So that's fully activated. We've got three things in corners. For every one, I can spend an iron, one, two, three, to get three points. So nine points coming in. Oh, I can't find the tens. Typical. Oh, the tens. Five, five. There we go. Right. And we've got a bridge coming. That's why we want the wood. And we're going to have to spend the money to get another wood in a minute as well. Oh, there's, a, there's a money on that action space. Right. Because then, oh, the downside of this is, the downside of the metal processing being in this corner is, it's not a terrible downside, but it means that putting a bridge down to activate it a second time isn't going to benefit another building. Well, I think that's okay. That's It's still going to be big for the metal processing. It's still going to be 12 points if we can get something down in this corner. Right. That's activated. We've had the points. The Foundry Harbour has now got two bridges on it, so activates again. And so now I think we can try 
the iron instead. And the, the advanced resources are worth points even if we can't get rid of them at the end, right? Because we we would have too much ore. So I think get the one, two, three, four iron from it instead. I think I'm caught up. This space gets a money at the bottom. This slides along. All these get a money at the top. And this is a way of getting a bridge up here now. So we're on round six coming up. Do we want the free movement? I haven't got any clay, so I'm inclined. I'm always inclined to get a free movement. But how are we affording these? the canal plants suddenly fall down on its face, isn't it? I mean, the, there's a lot of money up there, isn't there? Probably hasn't. Right, two more blue cards, and I think I've done everything else. Let's see what we found. Slow train wants to be next to at least two tracks, and then for every right angle in tracks that... It, for every two right angles that you've got everywhere, you get a money, I think that is. Right angles you have made out of train tracks somewhere on your board. The scaffolding business. Oh, what is that? I think that's... For, is that for every activated building? I don't think I've seen that. For each structure on the industry board you have not activated, you may trade an iron for three points. Right now, that is three buildings. Four. When that was put out. We have already got a way of turning iron into points, I suppose, though. Okay. So, I need to get to Attua. I think it's going to be Lacerda next week. But yeah, Atua's... I don't want it to fall off. Right, stuff to do. We've got no wood. Probably going to have to go get wood, which is a shame. We probably want to do paths, stroke roads, just because the action is worth three money. I suppose... Yeah, I, d I don't know if... I think it's probably worth building one thing, just because, as well, there aren't two great options either. We kind of need some basics working on. I would like... Like, taking this action, and this action, and this action, is the six money, right? That we need for the thing. Activating it, I mean... Just putting a, a path next to the mine, that's activated and that's a couple of money. We've got ore availability. Getting three different paths around this shaft tower is going to be quite difficult now, I think. Or we could to make the loading depot better. It wouldn't be massively better, but we could build one canal, one train track. Yeah, the shaft tower's probably not happening. It's it's yeah, take money. It's not like it's We need basics. One, two, three, four. That will just keep building up, though, if I leave it. Because if I, if I pour all this money into making canals this round, how am I going to make them next round? And things aren't necessarily going to activate a load. I think we want... I think at least one of them should be rails. Because we could get wood from here, and then that's our resources sorted. We come here, I can afford a canal. I suppose the canals, though, would have paid for the... I wouldn't have needed to go and get clay, would I? Is the argument there. But coming here to build... I wouldn't have had the clay to build paths. 
by coming here to get the money for the second. Because I don't need the clay right now, do I? I didn't get a money from that, did I? I think I got a money from going there. But we could do the building instead first. Take it all back. We'll keep the four wood. I think that had a money on it. So something to build. Do you know what? The publishing house... I don't think we're going to have... So you get money equal to the amount you have of the the fewest thing. Maybe the junk goods, sure. Mm. We're going to have to do something that... I suppose like the junk goods shop just wants to be next to two different things. It wouldn't give you the iron, but it would give you some money. The mine would give us some money as well. The slow train uses some lovely iron, but it's kind of useless to us. The scaffolding business might not be terrible if we can get some more iron later. We kind of want to build something. Yeah, I think we want the mine activated with a a rail on the side. I just need I need three money to be able to do the canal. Because our money came from this action. So do we build a building first? But out of the ones that are out there... There's nothing particularly great. I suppose whatever this gets you, like, it's worth eight points. It's worth six points. Just, it's costing you resources, isn't it? So the slow train is just worth six points, and it's costing me iron that I can't really spend right now. So it's not a terrible thing to just get built. It's just something that's not going to be profitable at all. The scaffolding business might end up paying off in some way. Even if it's just converting a couple of iron into some points, it's just going to be kind of off in the corner, miles away from anything. Or we could do like the junk goods shop. Here. Anticipating there's going to be a canal there. We could surely get a road there at some point, And then that's three different things around it. And it'd be worth three money and an iron. It's worth five points in itself as well for some not very expensive things. Let's go here. Get a bridge built as well. I'm going to go for... I'm not very pleased about any of these things, but we're going to have at least a couple of extra iron. We've got the wood, we've got the clay. Scaffolding business is getting built. Wood for a bridge. They're going to have a similar problem with the bridges on these buildings down here as well. But, like that could just be activated again for five ore as well at some point in the future. I think just the metal processing, just get the ore spent, because it's in the way as well of our free wheel rotations. We've now got four things in the corners. So we can spend four corner things to get 12 points for iron. Uh, so we're on 27. And there's still going to there's points on all of these buildings that we've built as well. So now I've got three money. So we can do a canal, which will give me two clay. Put it there. And we can pay a wood and an iron. I suppose that's where the iron's going as well. And it'll be okay. We can put that up there. 
and that's a rail on the edge now to activate this for four or two money and two points another two points as well and then we've still got an action left buildings aren't looking very exciting i suppose we've got the clay to do a bit of path in but i suppose you would just be putting stuff around the scaffolding business to try and get it activated later because you want it activated kind of soon because there's now only three buildings that haven't been activated but i've also got no iron at the moment as well We want a way of getting rid of this all. To be honest, it's a shame that shaft tower would be such a pain to do. Would it? Yeah, you haven't got the money for it. Right now, anyway. Right. We've got an action left. Could just get four clay. We can't next time. We could get a bridge, a path, and a road. But in terms of activating things, maybe it would be worth putting the canal here because then I can put a bridge down between these, and at least that's like kind of one ready. And yeah, we do want paths down here, don't we? Because it's not going to be all canals. No, stick to stick to what you were doing. Get a load of money. And just get things full up. We've got clay. The middle of this doesn't need to be a canal. So we're only, we're only going to get two more built at the most. We've got a fair bit of money now. We're going to spend a bit of it. So we want the stuff to be on the outside, if possible, and that one. So that's one. That's two. That's three. Because this would probably be nice to activate if we can. Maybe something better will come along. Maybe I'll put it up there then, if, in case something better does come along. Like, over there. No. Why not? That's not activating anything. Because they'll get activated first. Yeah. Oh, you thought I was cutting off the canals. Yeah, they can still come about. It's the same difference, really, isn't it? We just want to leave that outside one. So there's an outside, and we want this surrounded by... I suppose, like, yeah, do you want an extra canal around here so you'll get an extra clay or do you want the canal to be on the edge so you'll get two more points i think the points although watchers be too clay short i think we want f i think we want free actions get some of this all used up maybe and we've got no clay so pay for one each of those end of the round nobody came here but maybe should have we get new coins up top. The green card is finally deleted. Oh, thanks for joining us, though. Thanks, 18xx. 18xx. Couldn't stop saying X's. Thanks for your help. Have I done all the bits? You've done the wheel. I think so. Last two cards. We have... The Grand Hotel. It wants to be next to a canal and a road. Might be short on clay for that. Wait a minute, I haven't done the free turn. I've got the stuff, but I didn't turn the wheel. Get you a wood, two money and three points. Mm, it's not great, but it's worth 16 points just by itself. The Smelting Works worth eight points. So this is for the number of types of route that you have built seven or more of. Hopefully canals will be included in that. 
paths would be included in that. Trains and roads, impossible at this point. Uh, for that, ooh, it's effect though. We don't need a lot of things to have seven types because we've got tons of ore. Oh, but it's uh, you get less points for it. So it, it would be spending three ore to get five points and two wood. Hmm. Both like, I think I built the Grand Hotel as a kind of panic thing at the very end of my last game just because it was worth 16 points. Which is a fair old bit, isn't it? Right then. So we can't go and get four clay. We can still come here and get three clay though. So I've got three money. We want six for the canals, but we kind of want the scaffolding business surrounding. I suppose we've only got two iron, so it would be okay to have one of these buildings complete. It's just they're going to get completed by... Yeah, you could do the thing and get three paths around it. Smelting works costs an iron. It's just not as many points as that Grand Hotel. The Grand Hotel costs seven coins, though. Costing you seven points. It's not that massive. The smelting works is probably more attractive. We just also need to earn three coins from somewhere. Which could be done from the loading depot, but... Yeah, you'd probably do that to pay for both of the things. Do we go and get clay? Build three paths to surround this. To get six points out of the two iron that we've already got. Or do we just kind of forget about that? It was there more to get the metal processing done. And maybe get this smelting works built. Which would let us pay two ore for six points. Be worth eight itself and get us two wood. So in action's got to be for building canals. It can just be put down here as well, so it only needs one path next to it, which can be built from there. Uh, the game's over at the end of the seventh round, so this round now. So yeah, we get we could get the resources to do that, get that built, get the canals built. Is there a better thing to be doing though? So that would give us the resources we need to do this. Finishing these things would then give us loads of stuff, but we'd have no more actions to do things. Get another bridge from there. Yeah, we could, like, not worry about an extra building. Just concentrate. This is worth six points, activating it. And... Just the building a building is what's going to get you the coins to afford the canals. So you want something built. And they're all a bit pricey on the basic resources. I think that's what's going to have to happen. We're going to have to get some basics, but I think we're going to end up with a bit of a... a bit of an overflow of stuff. Facing the loading depot last round, which one? Yeah, maybe just surrounded it and activated it twice because you, you could also always surround it with more stuff couldn't you yeah i think it's it's a bit of a shame going into this last round having the the fundamentals on zero but i think the smelting works is a good shout it's just that it's a shame that that would be the action wouldn't it it would just be activating these three things and that's it but i don't think yeah i, I don't think we've got the stuff really for the canals would get us the clay wouldn't it oh yeah we could build the smelting works later couldn't we because the canal will get you the clay right the slow train is just six points just for having it it's not Yeah, the basic resources are worth nothing at the end. Pottery, waste of time. Coach hall, waste of time. 
Publishing house kind of a waste of time while I've got no clay, but it doesn't have to be activated instantly. If we did that in a bridge, we could probably get an extra bridge built, but we don't really want the other paths. The Grand Hotel could easily be next to a road, but it's so expensive to build that it's not viable either. The slow train is looking kind of nice just because it's, it's, yeah, it's not going to be worth activating, but it's worth six points for an iron that I don't think we can do anything with. If we were to build a bridge, would I be able to do another bridge that would activate? No, because these have got no bridges on them. The only thing you'd be able to activate a second time with the bridge is the shaft tower, and that's a waste of time. So don't think about bridges. Think about paths. And this is more money. So you want to do that. Spend the iron to get the slow train. We'll just pop it up, but then surrounding it's going to activate it. So don't build it then. What about, is the smelting works viable? What if we do the canals now? I can afford to do the canals now. And that's going to give me tons of clay, isn't it? I'm just not going to have the, I will have the money. I think we can afford to do the smelting works. Oh, that's got the money on it though, hasn't it? That's what's slowing you down. I haven't got the resources now to do the smelting works. I think get the clay. There's nothing to do with these other path bits. I think get the clay now. We're just going to end up with way more than we need in a bit. If we have loads of everything, it'll be fine because then it'll be worth some points. We've got to go here and get the money. Two wood, three clay, iron. Oh no, that costs money. No, doesn't work. Put it back. Yeah, we're just going to have to. We're just going to have to build the rubbish thing. And just have nothing from it, really, I think. The slow train is the only thing, I think, that doesn't affect the rest of what we want to do, unfortunately. It's just a shame to have, like, a prime spot where something... Maybe we could build something with the other spot, though, by saving an action. Just get that out of the way. Iron... So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't activate anyway, even if it was a good building, because it wants to be next to two rails. Iron spent, and we can do a path. So we could just surround it to build something else later if we've got the stuff for it. We're not going to have the money, though, to build anything else. If you did an action that earned you, oh, we will have the money, though. We will, we'll be able to build the smelting works. I think we'll be able to do it. Get a path. One, two, three, four, five. I've got a brick. I can build a road. Fine. I didn't think I had the resources to build a path. Yeah, we'll get a road built there. I think that's okay. A bit wasteful, but the roads are still going to be worth a point. Then, get the canal built. That's six money, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. It's going to get us four clay. Canal. Gets you two clay for every canal touch in this. Six more. Too much. But yeah, that's fine. And a money for every train anywhere. That's two money back. I think we can do the smelting works. Then, second canal at the fishing boat. Activates it. Every canal on the edge is worth two points. Two, four, six points. Oh, we haven't got tens, have we? We'll be all right. And that's the canals built. Then, are bridges worth points? I don't think they are, are they? Then, yeah, this is going to be worth way more points. I was just thinking if you could boost your wood, that would be great. Because you get points for the basic resource you've got the least of. But I think the smelting works is going to be the best thing to do. Two wood. So three of that. Still got the iron. Now we've got two money. Because it goes inactivated because it's surrounded by things already. 
So the types we've got seven of is two, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we've got definitely got loads of paths. And we've just got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight canals, actually. So we've got two types that we've got seven or more of anywhere on the board. So that means we can spend two ore, we've got tons of it, to get six points and two wood. Two ore to get six points and two wood. So now that's worth two points again. The bridge, I think we can just choose to not do it, right? Because we haven't got, the only thing we've got with one bridge on it is the shaft tower and all it would do is get us a load of ore, which isn't going to be worth any points anyway. So I think that's it. I think that's pretty good going though. Final bit wise. Actually, yeah, the Grand Hotel is just too expensive in money. Oh, we st you still get a free spin at the very end of the game. So I don't think you do the end of round preparation stuff, but you get a special one at the very end of the game, just anyway. I think it's in the normal rules bit, right? Yeah, at the end of the last round, you can use the at any time actions and turn the material wheel one more time for free, then finish the game. Which is good, because I couldn't... Yeah, I couldn't afford to do anything else. Suddenly the computer's fans started going like mad. What is going on? The computer's fans just like gone on max. So, points for the building cards. We've got 7, 12, 17, 24, 35, 40, 46, 52, 60, 70. It's already pretty good going. Money, 1. Point tokens, 10. 20, 41. Your special resources, are they just worth one each? I think they are, aren't they? Yep, yeah, they're worth one each. So we've got two points there by getting that wheel spin at the end. And it's a point for everything in your smallest amount of uh, basic resources. So we've got one wood there. So our basic resources are worth one point. It's a point each for all your roads, rail tracks, and canals. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen of those. And then finally, what's the last bit? Oh, empty spaces, of course. Only one building space empty, but. Um, Unfortunately, you don't lose points. Well, I suppose fortunately, you don't want to lose points as well. You lose points for every empty root space. There are a few of them. Two, three, four, five. That still sounds pretty good, though. I think surely I'm at the 80 minimum. So what have I got here? 70, 112, 114, 115, 128, minus 3. 123? That seems pretty good. I think even when I was getting all the rules wrong, I didn't get that many. And so that would put us at... You are victorious. <laughs> oh yeah, so like, I suppose for the game to... For the game to not insult you, you need 80 points. For the game to consider you victorious, you need 120 actually. So actually, that's that's that feels pretty good, right? 130 or more, your industrial area is worthy of an award. 140 or more, superior achievement. 150 or more, do you know more than we do? Unbelievable. So yeah, the, as I mentioned, you've got all of these cards now from the A deck still, because you only use a few from each of the decks. So what you can do is continue. You can play, keep all the cards you used away. You set aside these blue buildings that you never built. All the other cards can just go away. Play your second game, still with the A deck. Now, the red blocker marker moves in a zigzag instead. Work out your score, add that to your first game score. For your third game, all of the blue cards that you didn't build across the first two games, you shuffle those up, I think you need one of them. 
because you, you use too many. There's not enough to like last you through three games. So I think you need one of the unbuilt ones from your first two games, shuffled with the rest of them. Play a third game. The blocking marker now moves right to left, top then bottom. Add it up and see what you get. So it's got a different scoring criteria for the solo campaign. Uh, you want 350 or more to consider that a win. But you've got another advantage there as well of you will see all of the cards that are in the A deck as well. And, well, whichever deck you're using, doesn't have to be the A deck, of course. And there are six decks you can do that across. I don't think that the decks mix in anyway. You've just got to pick one like Nussfield. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's plenty to be seeing, whether you're campaigning or not. So there we go. That is Iranian Bigger Canal. Hopefully, with everything done right now, yeah, I think it was a really good thing at the start as well to have that amount of money. Usually it's a bit um, tougher. Like it's it's just so much easier to do canal things if you've got the, that initial money start, isn't it? It's all well and good, those things coming out, but if you can't afford them. And it's, it's quite good. Like the canal buildings are nice if they come out and work together. And it just gives you clay in itself, which is useful for so much stuff, even if it's just getting paths out and activating more stuff. I don't think there's a particular theme between the decks. There are different kind of abilities introduced in them. Like, I've, I've only seen the A deck so far in terms of playing it. But the rulebook does mention things like removing bridges so that you could, in theory, activate a building another time. Because it talks about, like, sometimes buildings might consider how many times you have activated buildings. So and the normal indicator for that is how many buildings have been surrounded, how many buildings have got bridges. Uh, but yeah, if you can remove bridges, that kind of throws that out of whack a little bit. So you've got to track it in a different way or something. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's um, like themed decks for Halata. I'm surprised there's, there's still like a fair few decks with Halata. I'm surprised they didn't just come out with um, more decks for it. Oh, thanks, Christopher. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the other game, even though I was, I was playing wrong. <laughs> you, you can see uh, an abandoned, never to see the light of day, playthrough on Patreon of it, if you'd like to see some more kind of wrong <laughs> at Ryan Burger Canal. But I think I did worse than this. I wonder if, like, I wonder if that's just something initially, like, there's, there's so many different decks at the moment, and so many, like, fresh cards that um, you don't need to. I wonder what's stopping you, though. I suppose may maybe the decks as they are have got, like, I wonder if they've been mixed to have a certain number of cards that care about the different paths so that you, like, if you just mix them together, maybe you would get a game where it's all about canals, which would be rubbish before you'd had a chance to get canals started, for example. Like, or just, like, that might hem you in. And the way that the decks have been constructed, maybe they're balanced in such a way that you can kind of get something started. I don't reckon my solo games at the moment. I think it's pretty... Like, it's... Like, I think Nussfield is easier to kind of just dive into. Like, although this is short as well, it's only seven rounds. It's shorter in real life, I promise. But, um... I think it... it it's got to be down to the, the spatial element of it. Just because you're trying to figure out like everything from the paths from the to the placement of the buildings themselves to where you're going to put those bridges is so important. Like You can't know what buildings are going to come out in future rounds, but there's so many times that you just think, like if I just put that bridge in a slightly different place, we saw there just because of that initial placement that I'm sure had a good reason to it at the start, but it meant that, oh, actually putting the two bridges on metal process, and we'll get to use that again, but it's much nicer when a bridge you're putting down contributes to two buildings getting towards activating again. So we wouldn't have been in that position at the end where you're like, well, there's no point getting a bridge because it's not going to get us anything. Yeah, it's uh, really thinky and lovely. Really enjoyed it. I don't know, like, I, I kind of like having those initial paths out just because like it's something not to worry about, really. But you can put them wherever you want. Which I forget to that stage. Kind of like I'm just being out. But there we go. We could do this again at some point as well. Like, there's maybe not in it for a campaign. We could have an ongoing thing though. We could just keep the deck in a bag, couldn't we? There's plenty to see. We could crack open a different deck. 
But for now, that is Iranian Burger Canal. And that is it for... Um, yeah, I still, I still haven't played Atua as well. We need to get that maybe the week after next. Yeah, I keep it in mind. Right. It is, like, it's downstairs waiting. But yeah, it would be much shorter, wouldn't it? Because it was pretty short when we played it at two players as well. So yeah, that is it for live this week as well. Next week, I think, unless something changes in the vote before I do the schedule on Monday, I think the next games in the Patreon vote are Kanban EV and The Gallerist. They're fighting out for the next position. So I think that's going to be a double... Lacerda in some way next week, which is kind of terrifying in its way, but kind of exciting because yeah, the Gallerist is my my favourite of the Lacerda style. It's one of my favourites overall, just anyway. And Kanban's pretty amazing too. It's just in the solo I get sacked. So I don't think I've honestly, by the rules, gotten to the end of a game. I've gotten to the end of the game by going just, we'll just have to pretend I wasn't sacked so we can see the actual scoring and stuff. But there we go. That's all for next week. You can support the channel on Patreon and Kofi. It will be massively appreciated. It's how I can do the things. Uh, but for now, have a good weekend, everyone. And I'll see you on uh, Monday for what's coming up next week. Thanks for watching and thanks for helping. Thanks, Scarcroft. You, The school belongs to you. And I'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.